How's it going? Today we're going to try to solve question number 33, search in a rotated sorted array. Uh, this question is actually very similar to a question I posted uh, just a couple of days ago. However, there's a slight twist. Um, so the previous question um, I asked was more of finding the minimum, but this one is actually searching for a value within a given array. So what we're going to be doing first is reading over the question, understanding the problem, and then figuring out how to solve it um, uh, in a more, more detailed way. Okay, so let's, uh, let's begin. Okay, cool. So let's read the question. Suppose an array sorted in ascending order is rotated at some pivot unknown to you beforehand. For example, you're given a sorted array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and it becomes 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2. That will be your income input array. You are given a target value to search. If found uh, in the array, return its index, otherwise return a negative 1. You may, you may assume no duplicate exists in the array. Your algorithm runtime complexity should be order of log n. So this is a critical thing we have to consider when we're designing our algorithm. Um, we're going to have to think about, okay, what kind of algorithms can we apply in an array to get it such that um, it will be uh, in log n time, right? So in this question, um, to really paraphrase it again, you're basically given an array uh, which was originally in ascending order um, and then it was pivoted at some point in time, right? And because of that, you're given an array that is somewhat semi-sorted and some part of it that is, um, I guess, not, not really um, sorted-ish, but it's still, it is technically still sorted, but it's just different, right? So for example, four, five, six, seven, and then you have that segment because it pivoted on the zero, it becomes zero, one, two, right? So in this question, um, it's pretty much you're given this array, right, with um, a sorted attribute. Um, that is very key, um, and you have to find a target that they give you, right? So if we look at the example that they give us over here uh, in this array, the target is 0. Uh, we know that it sits in index 4, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Now let's look at this other one, which is they're looking for the target number being 3, and that doesn't exist in here, right? So therefore you return negative 1. Simple enough, right? So in these type of questions, I kind of sometimes like to look at a, how would you solve this in a brute force manner? Um, and then I would evolve my solution to be, to see how I could meet this final condition, which is how do you solve this problem in log n time, right? So one of the things we may want to consider when looking at this, um, if, it, if we didn't have this like log n time um, thing, what would you do, right? One of the things that you may want to do would be to effectively just go through the whole array and scan whether or not that array contains the value you're looking for, right? That's simple. That's O of n time. And that won't solve this problem to the one manner that you want, right? So what you actually may want to do if you know arrays um, in order for it to be log n time, uh, what needs to happen, right? And then ask yourself, well, I need to know, make sure that as I do iterations through in order to find my target, I need to make sure my uh, subset from the original um, array set should be shrinking by half, by half, by half, by half, by half, by half, right? Each time, making it such that it meets the condition of log n, right? So what does that mean? It means that I'm going to have to know a couple of key parts, which is I need to know my parameters, my leftmost quadrant, my rightmost quadrant, right? And I need to know my midpoint, right? And um, once I know these three points, um, I need to use a certain algorithm to determine, okay, well, uh, how should I basically need to, or what do I need to do to adjust uh, my next iteration to determine whether or not my midpoint uh, would be the solution I'm looking for, right? So if this hasn't struck in a bell to you yet, um, it probably will now. It's effectively we have to consider looking at um, using a binary search method to solve this, right? 
So what does binary search method mean or do? Effectively, you have like a target and you have a left and a right segment. And you keep, uh, based on some sort of magic or some sort of algorithm or math, you determine how to readjust your left and right quadrant based on the information you know from the midpoint, right? So let's look at an example of how can we apply binary search on this particular example, right? Um, I'm going to try a little different format. I'll show you on here via the text editor. Cool. So in this example, right, um, when I said we need to know a couple of elements, so we need to look at what is our left element, right? So our left element in here, it would be at position zero, right? So effectively, it would be the um, it would be the four while our rightmost element in this case would be, uh, was it zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Uh, right here, that's our index, by the way, um, and that's a two, right? So we know that, and our midpoint in this case would just be our left plus, you know, our right uh, will be our midpoint, will be three. Mid will equal to three, right? In this case, zero, one, two, three, or three is seven. Cool. All right. So what do we have to do here now, right? So um, one of the key elements that they give us here is saying that it this array originally started as a sorted array, right? So when we know that it's sorted, then um, if we're given a target, well, what we're trying to look for, ideally that target sits within the segment that is sorted, right? Why do I say that? <coughs> because if the segment that we're interested in is sorted, then we could effectively do a comparison between the leftmost boundary and the rightmost boundary um, to see if it sits within um, somewhere in the middle, right? If it's not sorted, then we can't use this relationship to determine, to, to be 100% sure that, hey, this particular target is within that boundary that I'm looking for, right? So in this question, it's effectively, we have to look at, okay, well, let's see, or let's try to guesstimate to see whether or not our leftmost segment is sorted or more rightmost segment is sorted, right? If our left side is sorted, then we know um, certain things to do to readjust our next boundary, right? If the right side is not sorted and we use that side, it's not gonna allow us to do this type of magic um, as effective, right? So let's let's uh, go into what I mean. Um, so when we look at this particular example, right? Um, and our target, I'll give our target in this case would be, target will equal to, let's just make an arbitrary target. Um, let's actually, make the target such that it's, uh, I'll make it as eight as an example, right? So we'll adjust these figures here, which because we're adding one more value, this will be a seven. And uh, I'll keep the midpoint as three for now. Um, three meaning that if I were to use, uh, I'm rounding down, because it's gonna be seven divided by two is 3.5, I'm gonna round down to three. You can round up, it doesn't matter, it's up to you, but I'll just choose to round down for now. So that's my value in there. Um, and my target, I'm just gonna make it as an eight, as an example, right? So in this example, uh, what I wanna do is effectively establish um, my left, my right, and my midpoint, right? And then I'm gonna see, okay, well, given, given that I know that my left segment to my midpoint, so that's from four uh, to zero, one, two, three to seven, Given that I, I need to check whether or not my left segment here is sorted, or um, if it doesn't, if it's not sorted, then I go. I know that my right segment is sorted, right? So um, the first condition I would check is whether or not okay is my left gonna be less than my midpoint, right? If that is the case, then I am very confident and that, that to know that this segment on the left side is sorted, right? So if I know that that segment is sorted, maybe that's a good candidate to check whether or not my target sits within this uh, boundary, right? So what I'm gonna do is gonna see, okay, cool. Since this is sorted, I'm gonna go and check whether or not my target is within 
this boundary, right? From four to seven. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check whether or not my target is gonna be greater than four, which in our case, yes. But I'm also gonna check whether or not my target's gonna be less than uh, seven in this case, right? Which it isn't, right? So if it's not less than seven, what do we do as our next iteration? So in the next iteration, we have to effectively see or readjust our boundaries, right? So we know that, okay, we know that our eight sits outside of the seven, so what do we need to do? We're gonna have to say, okay, cool, so since the eight is not less than seven, it's not within this boundary, then I need to make sure that my next iteration, um, I'm gonna readjust my left segment to be equal to my midpoint plus one, right? So in this case, it'll be at its fourth index, which is the eight in here, right? And my midpoint is gonna be readjusted now because it's gonna be four plus seven, right? And it's gonna be um, at the at this point right here, the fifth point. Cool. And this is gonna be the zero. And then we're gonna basically do uh, a same case, right? So what we're really gonna do with this new boundary is effectively um, it's gonna look something like this, right? Or at least I'll make it more obvious by saying that this is our new boundary. This is the stuff that we've gone through that we're really not gonna look at it again. So I'm just gonna <coughs> delete that. This is our new boundary, right? So our left segment is at index four. Let's just keep that as a reference for ourselves. <coughs> our rightmost is at seven, and our fifth is where our zero lands, right? So we have to repeat that case, which is we're gonna check our left side to see whether or not um, our left is less than our midpoint, right? To see whether or not the left segment is sorted. If it's not, then we know that our right side is sorted, right? So what do we do in this case? Um, if in this case is gonna be like, okay, well, my left side is definitely greater than my uh, midpoint, so therefore I'm not gonna check this boundary. What I am gonna do is gonna check using checking this boundary, right? So in this case, uh, I'll go to my right side and say, okay, well, um, is my target gonna be less than two, um, but also greater than my midpoint, right? Um, so this is our new boundary. Um, is it sitting within this segment? Um, in this case, it says no. So what do we need to do, right? In this case, we're gonna have to say, okay, well, if it doesn't sit in this boundary, then what we need to do is readjust our uh, right segment, right? And such that it goes to the midpoint minus one, right? So in this case, it'll equal to four. Go back into here, right? And our new midpoint in this case, is just gonna be our zero value, which, you know, effectively is our solution and therefore we will exit and um, give the absolute solution right so as you can see this problem is not that difficult the more hardest part is to understand the binary element of it um, so the idea is always to get your left quadrant your right quadrant and find the segment uh, and your midpoint and then try to find the segment that is um, that has some sort of that is sorted so you can use its um, its abilities to determine whether or not um, the target is sitting with that range, right? If it is within the range, then you do something. If it is not in that range, then you could do the opposite, right? So that will help dictate how to readjust your array, okay? So let's try so, um, coding this up right now relatively quickly. So first thing I always like to do is convert this into a function. Well, it's just a stylistic thing. You don't really need to do this step, but for stylistically, I personally like it. So we're gonna go and say, create the left equals to zero. My, let my right will equal to nums.length minus one, right? So just to get the indexes, um, and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna run a while loop, right? To check um, while my left is equal to my right, right? What am I gonna do? So this is basically ensuring that my left and are going to be you can run this while loop up to the point where uh, these two meet together um, or it so it doesn't ever cross and go to infinity right what I'm gonna do so at every iteration I'm gonna make sure I have a midpoint right so my midpoint is effectively gonna be the math.floor of my 
left plus right divide by two. Divide by two. All right, cool. So what that gives is like the three that we're looking for from before. And then what I'm gonna be doing is to, to do a quick check, right? Check whether or not my nums at my midpoint would equal to my target, right? If it does, then I'm just gonna return the uh, midpoint. Return, not retire, mid, great. Cool, <clears throat> now we're gonna move on to the segment that I was mentioning earlier, right? If, it, if the midpoint obviously is not in your target, what do we do? We need to start adjusting our uh, next iteration before we go to the while loop, right? So in this case, I'm gonna assume that my nums at my um, my left is gonna be the uh, sorted. Is, is that gonna be less than or equal to nums at midpoint? So what does this actually determine? This actually determines whether or not your left segment, I'll put it here, determine which segment is sorted, right? So if my left segment is, is basically less than or equal to my midpoint, then I know that my left, left segment is sorted, right? So if that is sorted, then what can we do? If my nums at the left segment here is gonna be less than equal to my target, and also I'm gonna check whether or not my target is effectively less than or equal to uh, my nums at mid, then I know that <coughs> then I know that uh, my target is within the range of the left quadrant. So what do I do? I make sure I make my right pointer adjustment to be mid minus one. Right? Otherwise um, it's gonna be my I'm gonna know that it's gonna sit on my right segment, right? So I'm gonna make left equals to mid plus one <coughs> cool so we do the same thing on the here on this, <coughs> on this other side which is nums at at the midpoint right it's going to be um, effectively less than or equal to the target oops and <coughs> target is less than or equal to nums at the right right in here make sure my left is going to be equal to mid plus one, right? Otherwise, it's just basically right. It's not on the right side. Um, and that will equal to mid minus one, right? So what this really does is saying that, okay, well, if my left side is not sorted, then of course, obviously my right side would be sorted, right? And why do I make this assumption? Remember, we only pivot at one point. So either your left or your right, one of those points is gonna be the sorted segment. And you're gonna use that sorted segment to determine how to readjust your uh, sub sub array, right? So we have that then <coughs> Effectively we know we will eventually hit to this point where it goes into uh, The target right if it doesn't then I make sure to return negative one, right? If that's not within there All right, so if I wrote everything correctly here, it should solve the problem. Let's try submitting Ooh, perfect. It solves a problem. Cool. Ah, this is horrible. 49%. Let's run it again just to show you. Oh, it's growing. See, just to show like a lot of inconsistencies with a lot of the Lico thing here on the top. Don't worry about it. Trust me on this. This is uh, more the time complexity of this is basically log n. Um, and we should just focus on how to solve this problem than to really think about like um, these the, the statistics in here. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna to try to uh, post a little bit more frequently now. Um, I also started recently started a Discord channel. I'm gonna leave it in the description below. Uh, feel free to join it um, on a daily basis. I, I'm on that Discord channel, so feel free to join and uh, be part of the community. Um, and we'll talk more some about the LeetCode stuff. But beyond uh, LeetCode, we also get, uh, this channel goes focuses on career as well. So feel free to join in. Um, or you could just sub uh, and like in this particular and uh, stay tuned for uh, the future videos. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh.